judge because the Hebrews were under his submission. God heard their crying. He heard how terrible things were. And so he raises up a judge who, in God's justice, commands this judge once he routs Bezek to do what? Now, this is something that you probably miss when you read the scriptures because it doesn't go into all the background all the detail. But what happens is the judge is ordered to cut off Adonai Bezek's thumbs. <laughs> and if you read that, you're going, that's just cruel. That's just gross. Why would they do that? Why would God demand that? Well, Adonai Bezek got it. If you read the text read what he said. I'm not going to give you everything that he said, but he did say, justice has come from the Lord of the Hebrews. Hmm. I guess he understood. It wasn't thumbs up for Adonai Bezek, was it? No. A lot of this is very gory. It would make a great action-packed movie, if you will. When I asked last week in, in class, when I say the book of Judges, what judge do you all think of? All the women in the class says, Deborah. Really? I mean, not that it, it was very surprising that Deborah was a judge, because oftentimes we equate this idea that came out of a mistranslation with Paul that women couldn't serve. Women couldn't be leaders. And so raising up a judge, raising up a leader, and she's a woman. Yeah, that was a little bit different. Deborah probably isn't one of, one of the, the most outstanding leaders. But certainly in her tenure, you get a very gory picture. You see, she goes together against another king, the king of Canaan. Now, every one of these judges fights a different king. Every one of them has beaten the Hebrews into submission. Why are the Hebrews in submission? We read it. Because they're serving and worshiping other gods. They've walked away from the covenant. And you get this pattern. They walk away from the covenant, and then all of a sudden they go into submission. And then the oppression gets so great, their cries get so great, that they finally cry out to the God of their ancestors. You notice it says, the God of their ancestors. That's not a mistake. Because very often it was not their God. But it was the God of their ancestors. And then God would raise up a judge, a deliverer, someone who could get them out of this oppression. Deborah was such a person. Deborah and Barak. Barak was her general. Deborah was the one who was the decider. She was the strategist. On the other side, you have Jabin, who is the general, or Jabin's general is Sisera. Now, Cesera was just one of these marvelous generals. When he saw that the battle was going poorly, when he saw that all of his 900 horses and chariots were suddenly being defeated by soldiers on foot, Cesera, in his wisdom, gets in one of the last of the chariots and horses and takes off. <laughs> just what a general is supposed to do, right? Desert your men. Run away. Go and hide. And he did. And he went to what he thought was a safe haven. And he found a woman by the name of Jael. Another woman in all of this story. And Jael knew that Sisera was a general for Jabin. Knew that he was the enemy. Knew that he was a person who was evil in the sight of God. Knew that he had oppressed God's people. And when he came into camp, she said, My general, you are tired. Come into my tent and rest. 
I'll make sure you hide. And he says, if anybody comes to the tent door, make sure that you tell them that nobody's inside. Sure. So she gives him some warm milk, and he falls asleep. And Jael goes out and takes matters into her own hand and kills Sisera. Yeah, I don't know if I should just let you read that or not, but it's, it's gruesome. Put it this way, he will not be camping in the same way any longer. Right? Yeah, the ones laughing, they read the story. <laughs> yeah. What she does is she drives a tent stake through his temple. When the Hebrews show up, there he is dead on the ground. She says, here, come on in. Here's the one you've been looking for. Deborah reigns, and as long as she's alive, things seem to go well with the Hebrews, with the Israelites. And as soon as Deborah dies, it says, and they did evil in the sight of the Lord. In other words, they went back to their old ways. They began to worship the Baals. They began to worship all of the other gods. They began doing all of the things that God had told them you cannot do. Now, there are other judges. Actually, when I asked the class last week which judge they thought of most quickly, I expected this next one. If I asked you, if you've been to the movies lately, give me the name of a strong man, somebody who is noted for his strength and his roles that he plays. You'd say who? Really? Nobody? How about a guy by the name of Arnold? The governor. <laughs> sure. Those are the kind of roles he played, didn't he? He was always the strong man. But in the Bible, it talks about somebody who's even stronger. And it wasn't like Arnold who played a role. This guy was real. This guy did all kinds of strong things. And there again, it looks pretty gruesome. But they were gruesome times. The kings that they came up against were horrendous. They were evil. They worked toward the destruction of all of the people around them, not just the Hebrews. And certainly it was no different when the cry comes out and God raises up a man by the name of Samson. Do not confuse him with Hercules, the myth. Samson is not the same. What Samson did, the Bible says, was very real. Samson is just this big hulk of a guy. It says one time he took revenge, tied the tails of foxes together, and sent them running through the fields on fire. And it lit all the fields on fire. The crops went for nothing. Yeah, but there's a point to this. Another time he killed a thousand men unarmed, at least he went into it unarmed, found there by the side of the road the skeleton of a donkey. He picked up the jawbone and it says he used it as a weapon and he killed a thousand men that came after him in hand-to-hand -hand combat. He said when he was captured one time and he allowed himself to be captured, they tied him down with all new ropes and it said... Like Gulliver's travel, <laughs> he just kind of pulled them all out and got up and walked away. But finally, they'd get to the source of his strength, which, by the way, was not his hair. It was his own disobedience to God, his own walking away from the things that God had given to him, that they capture him. They cut off his hair. They gouge out his eyes. They put him in chains. They put him under heavy guard, you think? <laughs> but even in the end, he ends up taking down all of the Philistines with him as he pulls in the columns of this great gathering place. And they all die, as does he. 
So what is all of this? Well, one of the things that you need to see in all of this, I hope, and there are